William Carey said, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. While a new fellowship of pastors and churches, known as the Baptist Bible Fellowship International, was being launched in May 1950, a new courageous missionary couple were sailing into the port of Yokohama, Japan, enemy territory after the deadliest war in human history. 70 million lives had been lost, including over 3 million Japanese and over 400,000 Americans. This new missionary couple were newlyweds Laverne and Evelyn Rogers. Laverne was born on July 25, 1927 in San Antonio, Texas. He grew up and trusted Christ as his savior at the age of 12. During his high school summers, he worked at Randolph Air Base with his dad, repairing generators and motors. Laverne recalls where he was when Pearl Harbor was bombed, thrusting the United States into World War II. I was in junior high school when Pearl Harbor happened. Like every other American, we hated the Japs and went to war with them. Then, during his senior year of high school, Uncle Sam drafted him into the Navy, where along with one-tenth of America's population, he would fight to help end the tragic war. Hysteria and paranoia about the Japanese people grew in the U.S. after the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941. Newspapers repeatedly printed the wartime brutalities and cruel inhumanities of the Japanese troops. All the while, Laverne was wrestling with God as the turmoil of the war raged around him. It was in the Navy after struggling with God's call, I finally crawled out of my Navy bunk in San Diego and turned everything over to him. But I learned real quick in the Navy, when the CA says go, you go. No questions asked. Laverne initially surrendered to go to China as a missionary until the Communist Revolution closed the doors to China for missionaries. He entered Bible Baptist Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas in 1946, after being honorably discharged from the Navy. It was during his second year in seminary when General Douglas MacArthur made the historic plea for 5,000 missionaries to come to Japan and share God's love for the Japanese people so that the United States would never face a Japanese army across a battlefield again. Laverne, along with hundreds of others, discarded their hatred, surrendered to go to Japan, taking up MacArthur's challenge to love your enemies. On the day he graduated from seminary, he proposed to Evelyn Minshew, with whom he had become smitten at the church where he was filling in as a pulpit supply preacher. Her obvious love for souls touched his heart, and he began praying that God would unite them in marriage. And that he did on August 26, 1949, just six days before they would be approved as missionaries to the country of Japan. I found a young lady out in West Texas who said yes when I proposed. I'll go with you wherever God leads you. And that was to Japan. And when we had about $600 coming in from a little over a dozen churches, I had written, I foster, how much does it take to live in Japan? He wrote back, if you have $50, you can eat. We had 600, so that's six times more than we need. And Evelyn said, let's go. You know, I've had the privilege to sit down with Laverne in my office a few different times and to see his heart and passion for the ministry always. It's humbling and it's, and it's challenging. But I remember him telling me when he uh, went to go over to Japan, he didn't really know much about the culture or really anything. And so he went to the bookstore of all places and uh, grabbed a book. And I'm pretty sure he said the title was Learn Japanese in 40 
days, and so I guess he thought uh, on the shipping containment he would he would learn a language. We boarded the Elizabeth Lakes in Houston, Texas, sailed through the Gulf of Mexico in that uh, freighter loaded with fluorescent light tubes. They just had come out. A boatload of fluorescent light tubes. The ship sat right up on top of the water. No way it didn't go down for a cushiony ride. And we beat Elvis Presley, rocking and rolling, 33 days and nights on the water. God was sending me a message in that first trip you are going to a country that is rocking and rolling in pure misery uh, following this tragic war. And thus we arrived at midnight, 1950, uh, May the 5th. In Japanese language, the number five for fifth month, uh, fifth day, 50th year, is go, 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 go. And that's what Jesus said. So Lord, here we are, we've come in obedience to your call. There to greet them on their arrival into the port of Yokohama on May 5th were seminary classmates Ike and Jane Foster and Olson and Lelia Hodges. Within a few short months, Alvin and Clara Marsden would also soon join them to complete the team that shared one common goal, to reach Japan for Christ. Finding most of Tokyo and Yokohama flattened to only the foundations as a result of the bombings was indeed shocking. Trucks and taxis burned wood or coal. Gasoline and food were rationed. Masses of people moved mindlessly about with only frowns on their faces and the clothes on their backs. Communist demonstrations were still being held and the new missionaries feared for their lives at times as they witnessed the hatred left over from the war. It was very depressing. After the war, the Japanese people were absolutely devastated. They've been described as just zombies walking around. The clothes they had on their back was probably all they had left. Very depressing indeed. They were aloof. Young people would give ear. And our first uh, fruit uh, came from the young people. We went anticipating, counting the cost, we'll probably be martyred. That never happened. Instead, over and over again, we had Japanese citizens apologize for the war. The second week after they arrived, Laverne preached with the help of an interpreter at a meeting where 30 people received Christ as Savior. They were quickly off to a great start and would soon see a need for buildings where they could meet and train those who surrendered to ministry. Housing was very scarce, as you can imagine, but the team was fully dependent on God to work out a plan. One day, Laverne and Ike Foster were traveling through Shizuoka, where 60% of the city had been flattened in the war. Stopping by the beautiful city hall that had survived the bombings, they were able to meet the mayor, who was very happy that Laverne wanted to come to their city. Instinctively realizing Laverne and his wife were in need of housing, the mayor offered one of the few small frame homes being built to live in. For 700 yen, or $1.95 a month, they were thrilled to have two small rooms and a tiny kitchen. At the beginning of the Rogers ministry, Japan was a war-torn country. Everything was in flux, and Laverne and his fellow missionaries seized the opportunities as they came, one by one. They were faced with a post-war challenge. How do you build a church facility when there are no materials? The answer, old-fashioned recycling. For example, in Shizuoka, 
before missionaries purchased the materials they could remove from a former Nikon building. By hand, the four men tore down the building, took the scraps, and built their first church in Shizuoka. Five times Laverne worked on what he called wrecking jobs, tearing down what existed and repurposing it for their own use. Laverne had four goals upon arriving in Japan. To win souls, start churches, start a Bible college for training those going into ministry, and open a camp to further the growth of believers. Along the way, God blessed him with unbelievable connections. Norio Adachi, one of the early converts who worked as a translator for General MacArthur, assisted them in translating many of their teaching materials for the Bible College. Princess Sachiko Yasuba, whose grandfather was a great samurai warrior, won her father, who was a ranked general, to Christ on his deathbed. Laverne saw great success implementing all that he had learned in seminary from J. Frank Norris, Fred Donaldson, and Louis Ensminger, also known as Mr. Sunday School. Laverne and his co-workers held Sunday School campaigns. They conducted house-to-house -house visitation and held street meetings, tent meetings, and evangelistic meetings. Many people were saved and new believers learned the importance of tithing and eventually faith promised mission giving. As Laverne and his fellow missionaries began to see the fruit of their labors in reaching the Japanese, all the while Japan was working tirelessly to rebuild their country. During the first 10 years after the war, Japan was given a favored nation status due to the devastation that occurred during the war. This enabled them to produce cheap goods for the international market and the economy began to grow. Then in the 1960s, Japan began to work at improving their image by producing better products at a fair price. Japanese automobiles and electronics suddenly were in demand worldwide. This effectively began bolstering the Japanese civilization overall. From the beginning, it was clear that God was affirming his call for Laverne to be in Japan. Churches were started even before they conquered the language. Interpreters were used for preaching and teaching until they could gain mastery of the language. Laverne reported, the Lord was blessing so much we couldn't sit still. After the fourth church was established, Laverne sought the Lord as to where he would have him go next. He told God he didn't want to go to Tokyo, that there were too many missionaries there already. But God said, yes, Tokyo, sell your home and go. The Rogers family moved to Western Tokyo and started what would become a flagship church in the Japan BBF. Chofu Baptist Temple was born, along with the Kohitsuji Yochien, otherwise known as Little Lamb Kindergarten. Some would say that starting a new church during a record knee-deep snowfall was a bad time. But at Chofu, decisions for Christ were made from the start. The Chofu Church is a miracle church. We were a very meager support. But God, Jesus said, I am the way. The Japanese had a, an expression I learned pretty quick. Uh, when they were frustrated and couldn't do anything, they say, I have no way. Shoga uh, nai. And uh, Jesus said, I am the way. On the outskirts of Tokyo, they were able to acquire from the number two Japanese general in World War II, General Takashima, a one-fourth acre of land with a house with a total worth between one-half million to one million dollars in exchange for Laverne's previous home. The general declared, Missionary, I have appreciated missionaries like yourself coming to my country after the war. You have done so much good for my country. Thank you for coming. Could you use my property for your church? The church and school grew, and in 1970, Chofu Baptist Temple held their first missions conference. The key to Chofu's missionary efforts was introduced, Faith Promise Giving. In 1978, the building that remains today was dedicated. Huge for Japanese standards, Chofu had a weekly attendance of over 200 people. Chofu members gave generously. Young people were on fire and surrendering to full-time ministry. 
The church at Chofu is an amazing story of Faith Promise missions at home and abroad. During Roger's 30 years at Chofu, seven churches were planted in Kofu, Uenohara, Wakaba, Atsugi Naval Air Base, Ohira, Myota, and Hachioji. In addition, five missionary couples were sent out to Indonesia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Hawaii, and a restricted access nation. In total, over 50 people surrendered to full-time service at Chohu Baptist Temple. It's been a privilege and an honor for us to be the sending church for uh, Laverne Rogers. There's been 14 churches that were attributed to him planting. The last one, when he was 90, Two years of age, he planted a church in Camera City. Uh, it's amazing to think that he could do that at the age of, of 92. Out of those 14 churches, though, there's over 90 churches that have multiplied. You know, people told him he couldn't do it. It's too expensive. The people won't be receptive. And, uh, you know, Laverne, he just had the heart of God and said, you know, if God's called me, God will do it. And he did. Buddhism and Shintoism are the two main religions in Japan, still is. The Ministry of Education registered all of the religions. They deal with uh, six million different religious affiliations. A man named Motoi Maeda was gloriously saved. Being the son of a Buddhist priest, he was disowned from the family when he became a Christian. He was even forced to leave his home. In spite of his difficult life, he was faithful in church and of great encouragement to the pastors. He especially loved to hear messages about Moses. He counseled Laverne often about the effects of Buddhism on the Japanese people. One time he stated, the gospel is a straight cane, but we Japanese have only seen crooked canes. Your job is to keep laying the gospel as a straight cane right down beside our crooked ones until we see the difference. It takes great courage and commitment to preach the gospel in Japan as it takes a long time to see results. Within the first year in Japan, four churches were started by Laverne and his fellow missionaries, and it became quickly evident that they would need to register with the government. They began drafting the necessary papers that would formulate the Japan Baptist Bible Fellowship. At one point, they had to halt their work while the Constitution of Japan was being rewritten according to General MacArthur's instructions. Once that was completed, the JBBF was one of the first institutions recognized under Japan's new constitution in 1952. With the JBBF now formed, they were able to move forward with establishing a Bible college to train the eight men who had surrendered and were waiting to be equipped. Bible college was a perfect platform to train them just like I have been trained. I studied Sunday School Administration under Louis Hinsminger. I have always emphasized Sunday School. Sunday School is the seed sowing time and the reaping time is the worship service. We had uh, eight students, full-timers that the Lord had given us. We were still struggling with the language. We felt urged to start. So we had started in Olson Hodges' garage. And at one time when I was in charge of the college, uh, Quonset huts came available from Army Surplus uh, for a song. And I rested the students from classes and took them with me and tore down the Quonset huts to move on to new property for uh, classrooms and all, uh, dormitories. They were freezers in the winter and furnaces in the summer uh, with uh, corrugated steel uh, arches and uh, plywood on the inside. Our first uh, preacher brethren, they became teachers after their graduation. 
God has blessed are pretty close to 300 graduates now from the college. Laverne would go on to teach for 35 years, four to five hours a week, traveling eight hours each way from where he lived while pastoring a church. With his continued language learning, full schedule of church services, and wrecking and building projects, he averaged only three hours of sleep four days a week. At one point, he stated, the load was so heavy, I almost had a nervous breakdown passing out one time. In 1999, Laverne would realize his fourth goal, that of opening a Bible camp. After praying for nearly 50 years, the Grace Campsite was purchased by the John Rawlings Foundation up in the mountains of Kariozawa, Japan's most famous mountain resort. Through the years, God has always provided key people in Laverne's life to help him along the way. Evelyn, while raising their three children, served courageously by his side for nearly 40 years until she suddenly passed away in Japan in 1989. Then in 1990, Laverne married Clara Marsden, widow of Alvin Marsden, his longtime missionary friend from seminary days. After they had both lost their spouses, Laverne asked Clara, who had been Evelyn's best friend, to marry him and finish the work that the four of them had started in Japan. In 2014, Clara passed away in Japan after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease. In 2019, the Japan Baptist Bible Fellowship celebrated their 70th year. Nearly 100 churches were represented with over 700 people in attendance. It was an exciting celebration giving all glory to God and a challenge to do more to reach Japan for Christ as well as sending missionaries to the regions beyond. On two different occasions, individuals rode up to Laverne on his bicycle saying, hello, are you American? Why do you come to Japan? Oh, that just opened the door for conversation. Laverne never grew tired of answering that question with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, that is a fabulous, fabulous commission, that, a charge that Jesus gives. I don't think we really let that soak in as deep as it ought to soak in. Or we, every time I hear somebody say, oh, I don't have a call. What's your telephone number? Uh, I always say, give me your telephone number, I'll give you a call. I had a telephone call. Uh, uh, MacArthur made that appeal. And I forgot going to China and said, yes, Lord, I'll go share your love with the Japanese. I'll go. And so I went. Uh, Laverne Rogers is my missionary hero. It was back in January of 2017 when he was 89 years old and on furlough that he came to my home church and began to report on all that the Lord Jesus had done over his life amongst the people in the nation of Japan, a people that he served for over 70 years now. And at the end of that report, he very gently takes off his shoes and he puts them on the pulpit and he speaks these words. He says, it's not much longer until these shoes are going to be empty. Does your church have somebody that can fill my shoes, somebody that can take my place when the Lord calls me home to glory? And it was at that very moment that the Lord began to work within my heart to surrender my life to the work as a missionary full time to the nation and people of Japan. I think it would be no tribute to the Lord to say we would do it over again, other than 
just like he has blessed. He has blessed so much. I have no regrets, uh, just more of the same.